Good morning, brethren. You are welcome to today's family devotional number 127. Number 127. God bless you as you listen to us. Kindly share our videos extensively wide. Like our videos. Pass your comments as you deem fit. Because we are all learning. We are willing to learn from you. And um, press the notification button so that you get to know when we we'll upload new videos. God bless you. Please let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for a new, beautiful, fresh day. We thank you, Almighty Father, for our yesteryears, for our yesterdays. We appreciate you for all that you have been doing in our lives. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for protection, for provisions. Thank you for safety, for security. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us all the time. May your holy name be glorified in Yehoshua's name. Daddy, as we go in your word this morning, we invite you. Holy Spirit, to so come and be with us. Please come over us in Yehoshua's name. Give us a heart of understanding in Yehoshua's name. I pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, this morning, all our iniquities, please forgive us in Yehoshua's name. Today, speak with us in a new way in Yehoshua's name. Daddy, at the end of today, Lord, let us have cause to glorify your holy name. We oh, remember those who are under special challenges now please meet them all at the point of their, of their needs all of us meet us at the point of our needs in Yehoshua's name thank you blessed father glory be to your name I pray daddy let this message minister life to all my listeners and even to me the speaker in Yehoshua's name thank you blessed father in Yehoshua's mighty name we have prayed amen So the title of today's message is Let us try to please God. Let us try to please God. And the passages we are going to consider, there are three of them. The first of them is Psalm 57, Psalm, verse 7 to 11. Psalm 57, verse 7 to verse 11. Two. John 5, 16 to 30. John chapter 5, verse 16 to 30. Judges 6, and 1 to 7. Judges chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. As you're already aware. Verse 8. To verse 8, okay. As you're already aware, our goal is to cover the entire Bible in one year. That is why we're not leaving any Bible um, chapter, sentence, even word. On red. We are list we are going to analyze what God has for us inside these passages. So please be very attentive. If you are just joining us, you can start from here and keep moving. In one year's time, if you follow us diligently on a daily basis, you would have covered the Bible. You can as well go back to the beginnings because that would have been sequential. If you follow that, 
follow that so that you'll be building upon it. And by the time we're one year, you already completed the Bible. Today is 127th day. When we say message number 127, it means 127th day out of 366, depending if it's a leap year or 365 days, whichever it may be. So please follow us. Above all, please subscribe to our channel. Please do subscribe to our channel. It will also boost our um, opportunity to be able to reach out to the wider world because by the time we have 1,000 followers, we will be able to do live that we can even interact together on YouTube. So this is the importance of it. It's not that we are looking for fame, it's not for anything, but it is good to reach out to others, subscribe, so that we can reach out to more people. God bless you as we go on. The title is, again, is Let Us Try to Please Our God. Yes. My heart, oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. I wake my soul. I wake half and lie. I will, I, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. Just one moment. Let's start this way. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Let thy glory be above all the earth. The book of Joshua, chapter 1. Verse 8 to 10 says, This book of the law shall not depart from thy hand. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. And thou shalt endeavor to do all that is in it. And this way, whatever we lay our hands upon shall prosper and that we shall have good success. What a wonderful way. You can see, all glory, honor, and adoration be unto the Lord for his mercies, for everything that he has been doing, is doing, and will do for us. The passage that is read to us started by glorifying the name of the Lord from the bottom of the writer's heart. And today we are using the work of the writer. Shouldn't we as a people also follow the pattern? If the heart of King David could rejoice unto the Lord, he could glorify God in all his ways, and he eventually prospered. Why don't we follow his pattern? Let us take the words. Focus on pleasing God, and you may please man. Brethren, all of us, the whole world, thank God now what is happening. It's not limited to where we are operating from now, Nigeria. The whole world is facing challenges, inflation, Wars, calamities, everything, climate change, um, various diseases, outbreak of various diseases, and so on and so forth. The whole world, is, there is no country that is exempted. Why is this so? It is simple. Because we are trying to please ourselves. Individuals are trying to please themselves. Countries are trying to please themselves. 
um, organizations are trying to please themselves. The people themselves are trying to please themselves, which should not be so. Christ said, we'll get to see that later. He said, I have come to this world not to please myself, but to please my Father who sent me. We're all messengers in this world. God has sent us to please him and not to please ourselves. And one thing we don't realize is that if we please God, just as Joshua 1 verse 8 to 10 tells us, it says that we shall endeavor. You see, we shall not allow the word of God to depart from us us from our hearts, from our mouth, from everything. We should study the word of God day and night. And then we should endeavor, try to do. That's where this topic comes from. Let us try. Not as if by our own endeavors, by our own power, with our own anything, we cannot earn salvation. God himself gives us salvation free. But we should try. You see, God, God is looking for us. It's not perfection. It's trying let our heart be with him to please him and he says this way when we please him when we try to please him that everything we lay our hands upon shall prosper and then that we shall record good success you see prosperity and good success is what follows those who who endeavor to please God. If you please God, there's no way you can fail. If you please God, there's no way you can falter. Brethren, the long and short of this message this morning is for us to try. It is not easy. It is not cheap to follow the way of the Lord, but it is feasible. That's why God says, try, endeavor. Try to please God. And what follows is that your ways shall prosper and everything we lay our hands upon shall prosper and then we shall have good success. I pray for you and I today as we will begin to try to please the Lord today, then our ways shall prosper in Yehoshua's name. How do we please the Lord? Yes, please go ahead. Let your heart be steadfast towards God. First of all, let your heart, my heart, be steadfast towards God. Let's put God first in everything we are doing. And when we have the heart of that is panting after God, anything we do, we shall ask ourselves the question, what would my God have me do in this situation? And we will follow that which the Lord would have us do, then that is what is called the fear of the Lord. Fear is not that because God wants to kill us. No. Fear is to reverence the Lord, is to follow his guidelines, is to follow his ways, so that what we are trying to do, we would try to do in all our lives, is to please him and not to please ourselves. Sorry, the light, the light is going dim somehow. I think it's the setting of the phone. Please let us manage it as it is. If I tap it, it will come on, but how long will I continue to tap? Let's manage it. So, um, as I said, when we try to please the Lord, every other thing will fall into place. Please go ahead. Let your heart be steadfast towards God. Mm -hmm. God's love has no limit. You see, honor him always. God's love has no limit. It's limitless. It's boundless love. Therefore, let us honor this God <clears throat> by trying to know about him. Bible says, my book perished from lack of knowledge. Knowledge of me. Knowledge of me. Not knowledge of science, not knowledge of everybody, knowledge of me. So, if we cling to God and we do not reject him, and we have the knowledge of God, every other thing shall fall in place. And that is like Matthew 6.33 says, <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of God, that is doing the will of God, that is seeking after God, trying to 
make sure that God is paramount, is the most paramount in our lives. God will then show us the way to our prosperity, the way to our salvation, the way to our breakthroughs. That is God for you. But let us put him as priority one in our lives. Yes. John 5. Christ mm-hmm. was prostituted for breaking religious law. Okay. Now, now in the dream, we hear the word of God. Christ we are now going to John. John what? John, John 5. 5. Christ healed somebody on the Sabbath day, on a Sunday or Saturday as it used to be. And the people revolted that he has violated the law of Sabbath. That you ought, according to the law, you ought not to do anything on Sabbath day. That is the day dedicated to staying at home and then worshiping the Lord. That you should never do anything. Even they extended it to to include healing people. And they counted it as an offense against Christ because he did good on a Sabbath day, which we have now made a Sunday today. So what not what ought not to be now came to be. That is when you are doing good, your doing good should be all the year round. It should be 27, uh, 24-7. But because Christ healed on a Sabbath day, look at when enemies are out for you, everything you do can never please them. Even if it is good that you did to them, it can never please them. They were after Christ and they started looking for allegations to nail him. One of, the alleg- one of the allegations is that he healed on a Sabbath day. So it became an offense that he has violated the law. And forgetting that the law itself never saved. You see that all through Christ's ministry, it was like, the law is over. The law is over. Hebrew chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10 explained the details of this. Hebrews 7. 22 explained in particular that Christ has come to bring in a new order, a new testament that took over from the law, that grace has come to replace the law, that love has come to replace the law, that forgiveness has come to replace the law. But look at people in Christ's day, Pharisees and Sadducees. They were still castigating Christ for doing good on a Sabbath day. Can you see the contradiction? And you can see that all through Christ's ministry, his ministry contradicted the Pharisees and Sadducees' doctrines. The doctrines. Christ was particularly against the doctrines. He met them doing bazaar, buying and selling in the house of God. He told them, the house of my father, shall be called the house of prayers and not the uh, the den of robbers. He called them robbers who were buying and selling in his father's house, in the temple, you see? And devising all forms of monetary, money gathering schemes, which God, I mean, Christ said is not the way. That the way now is that you should, Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. It says, you should love your God now with the whole of your heart and love your neighbors as yourself. That that is the whole essence of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That it is not time for you to be talking about you know, offering one thing, sacrifices, doing all sorts of religious rituals that have avails for nothing, or, you know, do, I mean that, it even says that, look, um, 
Jerusalem will no longer be a place where if you don't get there, God does not hear you. That God will hear you anywhere you are. Not until you get to one mountain or the other. God will answer you on your bedroom. He will answer you on the road as you drive and you call upon him. He will answer you anywhere you are. It is not until you get to all these our religious um, centers before God can answer our prayers. No, he is with us. He lives in us. He dwells in us. He is not limited by space. Or neither is he limited by time. He is not restricted to a particular place. That he lives in or wherever we are, God is there. That because God lives in our hearts and he dwells in our hearts. So that is where God is. He told us all that. But did we hear? We're still castigating him for healing on a Sunday. Which day is the best for even healing? If not on a Sabbath day when everybody gathers together then, and then he performs whatever miracles he wants to perform directly. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Those in the grave, we hear the word of God. Christ them. also said, the, those who are dead, many of us have been asking the question, those who are dead, even before Christ came, how, who did not have the opportunity of hearing from Christ? See, how will those people he said the gospel will still get to them that was why when Christ was finally uh, laid to rest in his grave and he rose the period he was in the dead position he went to them to preach to them so nobody dead or alive has not or have not had the word of God. So, they also have had the gospel. Amen. Yeah? I have focused on pleasing God who sent me. Mm -hmm. Christ you. says, Christ says, I am focused, which is the topic for today. Let us try. Let us focus on pleasing the Lord. One thing we don't know is this. If we are trying to please the Lord, by extension, we will please man. We will please our neighbors. We will, and this is it. If you are pleasing God, how do you please God? You know about him. You follow his ways and you follow his guide. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. You follow teaching doctrine. You know God. About God. And what this God that you know about, what does he want you to do? is to love him and to love your neighbor as yourself. You see that once you know God and you are beginning to, in fact, instead of offering violence, instead of offering wickedness, instead of offering um, envy, instead of offering, um, just name it, all the wickedness that man perpetrated in this world, instead of going after um, sexual immorality, instead of stealing, Instead of lying, instead of, um, of um, you know, denying God, what will happen to you is that because you fear God, you see, these things will not even come near your heart so that all that you will endeavor to do in this world is the love of God. You will worship God, you praise him. You hear, see how David praised him there. He said, from the bottom of his heart, we give glory. Eh? Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heaven. Let your glory be above all the earth. You understand? You see, you swim in love. You swim in peace. You swim in joy. You swim in doing good to others. Any thought that will ever come to your heart in this world is how to please God and how do you please God? Like I said, you will not neglect his assembly of the saints. The heart, God Almighty, will dominate your heart. He will be the one guiding you in everything you do. He will be the one showing you the way, and you will follow. And God cannot never give you, lead you to an evil way. 
and he will now be the one that is saying, okay, love your neighbor as yourself. He will be the one that will make it possible for you to do good to fellow men and women. He will be the one that will make individuals to love one another. He will be the one that will make countries to love countries. He will be the one that will help us to be able to see ourselves as children of God that we are and that we are equal before God Almighty. We are created equal. You see, all these discriminations, man, woman, dichotomy, hmm? male, female, dichotomy, um, what do you call it again? Um, religious dichotomy, you know, hating people belonging to other religions is not part of the agenda of God. We are all children of God. The two major religions in this world now, Christianity and Islam, they all came from the same source and God Almighty is whom all of them are focusing on. It is not for us to be judging who is who. It is God who can. He has written down in his word. It is not for us to preach hatred because if you look at the way God works, even though Ishmael came from Hagar, you understand that God did not condemn him. God even blessed him. You see, some of the problems we are having today is because of the error of Abraham. And God did not even condemn Abraham. Instead, he blessed him. He blessed all his children, both from Hagar as well as from um, uh, Sarah, who is Isaac, who, who gave birth to Isaac. God did not destroy one for another. Even God took perfect care of um, of uh, Ishmael when his mother was taking him away and they got to an isolated place and they were hungry and the woman called upon the Lord God Almighty and the God made a way for them and even pronounced what it will happen to them in the future. Even though it is true that the Lord himself said, yes, he's, the generation of Hagar, Hagar will not allow the Israelites to rest. You know why? You know God is a jealous God. By the fact that Abraham had had two wives, so to speak, the issue of polygamy has come in there. Envy, jealous. You know, it's jealousy. It will be there. That's what is there. That is why you see today that in every polygamous home, that thing is only God that can help people to live beyond envy. It's only God can live, help people. The thing is that the women will be envious. That's why I gave an example the other day. You see, God is blessing everybody, but at different levels at different times. But women will not wait until their own time. The moment God is blessing one before their own child, the woman will become envious. Say, it should have been my child. It should have been my child. It should have been my child. That is the root of all this envy. Go and check what all our mothers are doing, especially in polygamous homes. They came as a result of all this uh, because of this polygamous, women inherently hate one another. Once you are polygamous, it's only God that can stem that down. So if God says they will be troubling themselves, God is right. God is, because he's all-knowing. He knew the repercussion and he has warned us in advance. Yes, during the period of Abraham, yes, it's allowed. But now that we're in the periods of grace. We are not supposed to abuse that grace by going polygamous. If you are going polygamous, you are creating unending problems. But if it happens to, the only way out again is today, thank God, there is Christ. So if people, even our women, will give their life to Christ, peace will come. Then if our children are, are clever enough to give their lives to 
Christ. Just a moment, please. So, as I said, you will see that it's only Christ who can make us to live above all these sentiments so that our lives can be better, yes? The Israelite did evil. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got to the Old Testament, that is the book of uh, Judges chapter what? Six. Six. Yes, one to seven. You see that the Israelites, look at the opening. The Israelites did evil mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. What the happened? Midianites will harvest the farm of Israel. Now, Israelites. you see, anytime we deviate from God, the way of the Lord, we reject God by not following him again. Troubles will come our way. You see, the whole world is facing troubles now because we have neglected God. This is the basic thing. Every other thing is additional. People will do as they please in their own hearts, and everything is self-centeredness. So we need to be careful. Let us remain consistent or consistently with God Almighty so that He will be guiding us. Anytime we reject God's guidance, we are in trouble. The same, you know, when the Israelites rejected uh, uh, Samuel, is it Samuel? No? They reject, yeah, and they rejected, um, what is that person now? They rejected, they decided to choose for themselves. They chose Saul. God told them that, yes, they've chosen him for themselves. And this is what will happen. They will tend to please themselves and they will run into trouble. And they run into trouble. Consistently from the beginning to the end. There is no other way to explain it that, than to say, we have become self-centered, we have become selfish, we, are not, we have rejected God. Let us return to God, and then our ways shall prosper again. Yes? Then Gideon arose, and God sent him to deliver but Israel. But the good thing about God is any time we repent, God will always help us out. God will always help us out. Gideon was the one that was chosen here. Previously, it was, uh, what's the name of this? Deborah. Is it Deborah? No? Yeah, that was chosen. Now, this time is Gideon that God chose. And consistently, God used him to deliver the Israelites. Let us follow this God. And you see, it is, it is human to err, to go astray. But it is divine for us to be restored. Let us come back to God. Let us put our evil ways aside and come to repentance. <laughs> Once we come to repentance, we follow the way of the Lord, our lives will never remain the same. Yes. And Gideon said, it doesn't matter how weak you are. Mm -hmm. When God wants to use you, he will use and you. And when God wants to use you, Gideon said, I am the weakest of all the tribe. And how will you use me? God can use any of you, any of me. God can use me, starting from our families, to deliver us from all the evils that are permeating our families and are permeating our society. You can use anybody. Today, people are coming, I mean, President Bola Tinobu became president because God chose him. There is no other way to explain it because all of us witness what happened to him. I just pray that God will use him for good for us. That's just, God can use anybody. If uh, Tinobu may be worse than any human being in this world, if God wants to use him, now he has chosen him. Let God use him for good for us. Let us not use our mouth again to destroy him. He has, done, he has gone through a lot. Let us allow him now to focus so that we will, uh, God will use him to uh, deliver us from the strongholds of the enemies that have held us captive in terms of leadership. Ask me, how many of the governments, even including the APC government, in the past, have been able to deliver us. But the way I'm seeing things now is that if you see the policies that this government is putting in place, you will see that God is really, really using him, but will we allow him to do so? <laughs> That's food for thought, yes? Verify that it is God talking to you. Mm -hmm. yes. When you are sent a message, verify it is God. Gideon verified. Gideon destroyed Baal's shrine in the night. So, at the end of the day, God made Gideon to deliver his, the Israelites. That's the bottom line. I pray God has sent you as a leader in your family. 
as a leader in the community. He has chosen President Bola Amentino for today as our leader in Nigeria. Let us allow him to deliver. Because, like I said, let us also allow our leaders in our various families to deliver. Let allow, let's allow, youth should allow the elders that the Lord has chosen for now to deliver. We should not kind of destroy them or by making them not restless. Let them be focused to deliver the messages that the Lord has sent them to deliver. Yes. Go ahead. Gabriel the third bar shrine in the night, mm -hmm. the midnight, the Amalekah, etc., mm -hmm. came to fight Israelites. Mm -hmm. Judges 7. Mm -hmm. Our strength cannot save us. Our so strength. Be, God reduced 22,000. Okay. Another important thing that we should note is that our strength <laughs> cannot save us. We have tried PDP, PDP as well. We have tried part of APC in the past. It has failed. But this time around, let us try God. Let us try God. Let us endeavor to please God. It's only God. He has chosen for us now. Let us, you may be arguing that he didn't choose. Okay, even if we have chosen for ourselves, nobody gets to that position except the Lord approves of it. Either for good for us or for bad for us. And the way I'm seeing things, God did not intend this present leadership for evil for us. It's for good. So let us allow him. Because it is we that shows democracy. Whoever we choose is who will rule us. Now, whether we like it or not, whether it is rigged or not rigged, whatever. He, somebody has emerged. That is the person we have chosen. And let us allow that person to perform. I know by the time Tinumbu must have done another, I mean, his eight years, Nigeria will never, the way it will take us to, in terms of positive things. Ne, ne, the, the, no government will come in that will be able to reverse it again in Yehoshua's name. But if we don't allow him to rest and we allow him to lead us astray, <laughs> you know that is the way it will be again. I just pray that that should not be in Yehoshua's name. Yes? And give Israel, mm -hmm. Israel victory. You mm -hmm. should always cry out to God for help in mm -hmm. any desperate situation mm -hmm. you find yourself. Mm -hmm. Do God, do God's will Any situation we find ourselves, we are now in, we are still in desperacy, and we are crying unto God. Let us cry unto God, not unto Tinubu again. We have done the end bad end bad governance uh, protest. We've done the answers. We've done the um, Ali must go. We've done the June 12. All of them directed towards the government. What did you come out with? Now, this time around, let us cry unto God. Let us carry our protest to God to please use the present regime. In fact, they may do it ignorantly. They may, you see, even if it will be a mistake for them to lead us right, let God use the present regime to deliver God's good messages to us. <laughs> In Yehoshua's name, yes. Do God's will fearlessly. And Never be self-confident, but be God's confidence. Okay. God, let us try to please God. When we follow God, then we will allow God's will to prevail upon our lives. Let us be God-confident. You know, Gideon did not go to that battle thinking that he has the power. No, he said, I am too small, I am too weak. And God says, go, I will follow you. Let us all allow God to do what he wants to do in our lives without us trying to uh, uh, gag him or stop him. Let us allow God to do what he wants to do and it will be for our own benefit in Yehoshua's name. Yes. Relating this to Nigeria, God, to Nigeria. Mm. God can use few people to save Nigeria. Yes. Be among the choosing few. Now, since... Relating this to our family. Wait, God can wait, use wait, wait. Just relating it to Nigeria. I've told you, God can use few people to save Nigeria. Be amongst the people. Because, now, if you are the type that is destroying the government, or you are the type that is saying that Nigeria will never be well, you are destroying Nigeria. If you are the type that is stealing and you are 
the whole type that is interested in people doing things the wrong way, you are destroying Nigeria. Be among the few who wish this nation well. Be among the few who wish the world well. Peace can come to the world if all of us return to God. Let us return to God. Peace is what follows those who follow God. Let us return to God. Peace shall never elude us again in Yehoshua's name. Now, in your family, I have always said it. May God use me positively for my family. May God use you positively. Let us surrender to God to use us positively. The polygamy and polygamous one we are talking about, God can choose you to erase all those evils with love. Maybe God has prospered you to a point. Make sure you remember the down through the starting from your family. Starting from your parents, starting from your siblings, starting from your extended members of family. Starting with your community, your state, before you call talk of Nigeria. Let God use you. Be among the chosen few. There's only few people that can have large heart to accommodate, especially in polygamous homes. Even in monogamous homes, you see that there's some there's no love such that they cannot even unite together. You see, left to me, the way I see family is this. A family is, for instance, you have father, mother, and children. All right? It doesn't matter whether it is polygamous now. If it is not well with all the children in the family, it is not well with everybody. Then, as God is blessing somebody from that family, one after the other, let them be a blessing unto their own siblings. Extending the polygamous home, extending beyond their own direct sibling, let it be their own mother and children from other mothers. Let extend that love, cross that bridge. You, it's only love that can cross it. Cross it. Do something good, not just for your own direct sibling. Do because God look at you as corporate. That corporate identity of your family, protect it. Don't be self-centered. Oh, if it is well with me and my own children, that's all. Or if it is well with me and my own brothers and sisters, it is, no. It is if it is not well with that entire family until it is well with everybody in that family. So who will bail the cat? Who will start that love? Who will go beyond his own immediate selfish interest and extend that love? If you cannot extend it to that, how will, how will you extend it to, to the community? So let us be among the chosen few that is molding the world for the better. Yes? Meeting this to our family, what can you do to deliver your family from spiritual and financial poverty? Yes. Be prepared to please God in this direction. Yes. In your own family, God can use you to deliver your family from spiritual. When I mean that, I mean many families, idol worshippers are still greater in number than Christians. Why not? Use your position as a child of God to influence the others to begin to serve the real God. And then when you are, they are now serving the real God, you see, the love of God will now begin to manifest and love will prevail and hatred will disappear. Evils that follow, whether it is polygamy or monogamy in most families, all those evils will disappear into the thin air. Be amongst the chosen one. Please do be among the chosen one this time. Try to please God. When you are doing that, you are pleasing God. And indirectly, you are pleasing man. And that is what is expected of us. May God Almighty bless you. Bless me. Go and initiate love today in your family. Initiate love in your office. Initiate love in your business. Those of you who are selling market, we say inflation is a, This inflation is not scientific in the sense that it's not proven that you know if people just fix prices they don't calculate the inflation rate you see people just want to say oh, i bought this for one naira therefore it, i will say i must sell it for 10 naira it's, it's not it's wickedness let us be realistic in everything we do god hates false skills you see if you are pleasing god you will hate false false skills and when you use good measure correct measure you see that the buyer will be at peace. You will not lose. 
So that is the, that is the balancing scale. Uh, but nobody will do that unless you know God. You won't even bother to want to know what well, provided you satisfy your own, you know, insatiable uh, appetite. May God Almighty help us in Yahushua's name. Please, let this message go far. Forward it to the local women, market women. Forward it to church leaders. Forward it to your own children. Forward it to your wives, your husband, your everybody, your sibling. Let this message go around. And maybe, who knows, simple as it appears, you may begin to have a change of heart. May we all have a change of heart for good in Yahushua's name. Almighty Father, we want to thank you once again for this opportunity this morning to hear this uh, precious words from you. Accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Daddy, even as we go today, please be great. Be grace for us to, to begin to initiate good things, to follow you and please you, to try to please you in all our endeavors. Father, let it follow us in Yahushua's name. As we do so, Father, let the benefits that follow those who follow you Benefit of peace, joy, you know, stability, prosperity, everything. Let it follow us in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. In Yehoshua's mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.